up to 40% of the weight that you're losing on your GLP-1 medications. I know you think it's this. I got a little surprise for you. A lot of it is this precious muscle. And nobody's talking about this. You're doing everything right. The scale's going down. Your doctor's happy. But underneath that number, your body is quietly breaking down its own muscle, burning through the very tissue that keeps your metabolism firing. This is why plateaus happen. This is why people regain weight. And this is why so many GLP-1 patients end up skinny fat, lighter on the scale, but weaker, softer, and in some cases, metabolically speaking, not much better than when they started. I'm Dr. Jones, DC, and I lead the coaching department at our nationwide GLP-1 clinic, where I've helped thousands of patients optimize their results. And this passion of mine comes from my own journey, where I've lost over 100 pounds myself, and I experienced this exact problem before I understood what was happening. Now I work alongside our medical practitioners, helping people avoid the same trap. Today, I'm going to show you the exact peptides that we use in our clinic to fix this problem. See, they help preserve and build muscle while you're on your GLP-1 medications so that your GLP-1s handle the appetite and that you can lose fat and not lose muscle while keeping that metabolism alive. But first, you need to understand exactly how bad this muscle loss problem really is because what I'm about to show you might change how you think about your entire weight loss journey. So let me show you what the research actually says. Studies on GLP-1 medications show that 25 to 40% of the weight that people lose, it isn't fat. It's lean tissue. That's muscle mass loss. One clinical analysis found that patients under Zepatide lost about 10% of their lean mass weight alongside fat loss. That isn't a side effect that they warn you about on the commercials. See, here's why this happens. When you're on a GLP-1 medication, your appetite tanks. That's the whole point, right? But here's the problem. When you're eating dramatically less and you're not hitting your protein targets and you're not doing resistance training, your body doesn't just burn fat for fuel. It breaks down muscle tissue too. You see, your body, it doesn't care about your beach photos. It can about survival and muscle is very metabolically active tissue it's requiring your body more effort to maintain this tissue so when calories drop your body looks at muscle and thinks i can convert this to energy this is going to help survive the famine i had a patient we'll call her jessica 43 years old mother of two followed the standard protocol for eight months on her zepatide she lost 35 pounds her doctors were thrilled we ran a dexa scan because it appeared she lost a lot of muscle that's one of those body composition scans that shows you exactly what you're made of jessica sat there looking at those numbers and her face just dropped out of 35 pounds loss 15 of that was muscle that is 43 percent of her total weight loss coming from lean muscle tissue think about what that means she didn't just lose weight she lost 750 calories worth of daily metabolism meaning she's burning 750 less calories and it's just gone her body was now burning significantly less fuel every single day and she had no idea until we looked underneath the hood and this is the conversation that most doctors they're just not having they're watching the scale they're checking your A1C levels. That's your long-term blood sugar marker. And they're celebrating the weight loss. But nobody's asking, what kind of weight are you actually losing? And see, here's the thing. Jessica's situation, it isn't unusual. It's very typical that we see in our clinic. We see this pattern constantly. Patients coming in, having lost 30, 40, 50 pounds. And when we assess their body composition, a huge chunk of that was muscle loss. Now, I'm going to show you exactly what we did to fix Jessica's situation later in this video because the results were very dramatic. But first, you need to understand why losing muscle is such a big deal. Now, quick second here, if this muscle loss issue is hitting close to home, maybe you're already on GLP-1 medications and you're wondering what's happening to your body composition, we offer these free discovery calls where you can actually speak with our patient advocates and they can assess your specific situation and help you understand what's actually going on. You can either text the number on the screen or you can check out that link in the description if you want to explore that. But first, let me show you why this matters so much because it's not just about looking toned or fitting into clothes. You see, muscle loss on GLP-1s creates a metabolic time bomb that almost guarantees that you will plateau, struggle with maintenance, and potentially regain everything you lost. And that brings me to the part that most people don't want to hear. Let's talk about the math here for a second. Muscle tissue burns about 13 calories per kilogram per day just sitting there. Fat tissue, on the other hand, only four and a half. That means every kilogram of muscle you lose is costing you metabolic capacity around the clock. When Jessica lost those 15 pounds of muscle, she lost roughly 90 calories of daily burn every single day. Forever, that adds up to 32,000 calories a year. That's the equivalent of nine pounds of fat her body would have burned automatically. This is the plateau mechanism nobody explains you. You started your GLP-1, the weight flies off, then around month three or four, it slows down, and by month six, you're barely losing anything. Your doctor's response, let's increase the dose. But here's what's actually happening. Your metabolism is crashing because you've been losing muscle along with fat. Your body now needs fewer calories to function. So 
even though you're eating less, you're no longer in a deficit. And the math has changed because your body has changed. And it gets worse. Research shows that 70% of people regain their weight within a single year of stopping these medications. 70%. And muscle loss is a huge part of why. Now, if this statistic just made your stomach drop, you need to hit that subscribe button right now because we put out four videos a week breaking down exactly how to avoid these traps and actually what it looks like to keep your results long term. Because what I'm about to show you is the difference between temporary weight loss and permanent transformation. And it also helps out the channel big time. So go ahead and hit that button right now. Now, when you've lost significant muscle mass, your metabolic rate is lower, your insulin sensitivity is worse, you become more resistant. The reason being is because muscle is your body's primary site for glucose disposal. They're like sponges for sugar. You've essentially downgraded your metabolic engine while expecting it to perform the same. It just doesn't pan out. I had another patient named Jennifer, 42 years old. She lost 35 pounds and she hit her goal weight. She should have been celebrating, right? But when she came to us, she was frustrated. She felt soft, flabby. She lost the weight, but hated how she looked now. Her arms were smaller, but they weren't toned. Her stomach was flatter, but it was still very jiggly. Jennifer had spent her entire weight loss journey doing endless cardio and eating only 60 to 70 grams of protein a day. She hated the idea of lifting weights. Her mindset was, I'll just rebuild the muscle later. Here's what I told her. There's no later. You can't effectively rebuild what you should have protected to begin with. Prevention is 10 times easier than reconstruction and rebuilding a muscle. You see, this is the trap. People focus so hard on the scale going down that they sacrifice the very tissue that's going to determine whether or not they can keep the weight off. They win the battle, but they lose the war. You ever hear that expression? <laughs> so what's the solution? How do you keep losing fat? while protecting your important precious muscle mass at the same time. And that's where these peptides come in. Welcome growth hormone secretagogues. I know that's a mouthful, but here's what it means in plain English. These are peptides that tell your body to produce more of its own natural growth hormone levels. This is different than injecting synthetic growth hormone directly into your body. Instead of flooding your system with external hormones, these peptides actually stimulate the pituitary gland, which is actually located here in a tiny part of the brain. It's a little pea sized gland. This is the master hormone controller in your brain. It releases growth hormone the way it did when you were younger. And that's the key thing here. As we age, our natural growth hormone production tanks. Research shows that growth hormone secretion drops about 14% every decade after age 20. So by the time you're 60, you're running on maybe 50 or 40% of the growth hormone that you had when you were in your 20s. This decline contributes to muscle loss, increased belly fat, slower recovery, and that general feeling, my body's just not responding like the way it used to. Should I make a video showing you how we stack multiple muscle building peptides together at the same time for maximum muscle building on your GLP-1 journey? Let me know in the comments if you would find that video helpful and I'll add that to the list. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When you combine declining growth hormone levels with a GLP-1 medication that's already putting you in a calorie deficit, meaning fewer calories than your body burns, you've got a perfect storm for muscle loss. Your body doesn't have the hormonal signals to preserve the muscle and it's looking for fuel. This is why adding growth hormone secretagogues can be a game changer for GLP-1. GLP-1 patients. The peptide combination that we use most often in our clinic is called CJC-1295 with ipomorelin. Let me explain why these two work so well together. Think of it like driving a car. CJC-1295, it's like pressing the gas pedal. It is a growth hormone releasing hormone analog, GHRH. That stands for growth hormone releasing hormone. It tells your pituitary gland to release more growth hormone. Ipomorelin works a little differently. It's like releasing the parking brake. It works through the ghrelin pathway. That's your hunger hormone system, removing the inhibition that normally limits the growth hormone release. So you're driving the gas, but you're removing the block so you go faster. When you combine them, you're pressing the gas and you're releasing the brake. It's synergistic effect, significantly more growth hormone release than either peptide alone. Studies show CJC-1295 can increase IGF levels, which is a really important and the most powerful growth hormone signal in the body by 45%. IGF-1 is the downstream marker that tells us growth hormone is actually working. Now, there are other options in this category. Samorolin is another GHRH analog. It works similarly, but it has a much shorter half-life. So some patients do well with it, but it requires more frequent dosing. It's just not as strong. Now, tesamorolin is the only FDA-approved option in this space. It was originally approved for reducing belly fat in HIV patients, but the research on visceral fat reduction is very impressive. 15 to 20% reduction in deep abdominal 
animal fat. It has also been shown to increase muscle density. These are very powerful options. Tessamorolin, much better than Samorolin, but CJC is your most cost-effective option. Now, when should you actually start these peptides on your GLP-1 journey? This is one of the most frequent questions that we get, and the answer depends on you. You see, if muscle preservation is already a concern, maybe you're starting with low muscle mass, you're older, you're already noticing age-related muscle loss, then starting these peptides from day number one makes the most amount of sense. You're playing defense from the beginning. But if your protein intake is optimized and you're doing really good solid resistance training consistently, you might save these peptides for later in your journey. Maybe use them more as a transitional phase from the active weight loss into the maintenance slash muscle building phase when the goal shifts to reshaping your body. That being said, anybody can start from the beginning. If the goal is to fully optimize the journey, there's no wrong time to protect your muscle. Let me give you a real example of why timing matters. I had a patient named James, 68 years old, waited three months into his GLP-1 journey before we started any muscle protection. In those three months, he lost seven pounds of muscle, seven pounds. And here's what most people don't realize. It took him eight months to rebuild what he lost in three. Three months of waiting cost him eight months of recovery. That's the math that nobody wants to hear because it's the reality. This is why working with a provider who understands this matters so much. They can assess your situation, your starting muscle mass, your age, your activity level, your protein intake, and help you make the right call on timing. So what can you actually expect when you add these peptides to your GLP-1 protocol? Let me break down the timeline based on what we see in our clinic. Weeks two to four, this is when the subtle changes start. Most patients might report better sleep quality, waking up more refreshed, recovery from workouts improves. You're not as sore as long. Energy levels start to stabilize. These aren't dramatic changes, but they're foundation. Your body is responding to the increased growth hormone signaling. Weeks four through 12, this is when things get measurable. And this is where most people get confused about what to expect. Now, here's an important distinction. If you're still in the active weight loss mode, eating in a calorie deficit, the goal during this phase is muscle preservation, not necessarily growth. You're protecting what you have while you're losing fat. That alone is a huge win compared to the typical GLP-1 muscle loss experience. But if you're eating at a maintenance or maybe a slight surplus, which often happens later in the journey, that's when patients typically can see two to six pounds of actual lean muscle gain during this window. Strength in the gym improves. You're lifting heavier, recovering faster, and you're starting to notice visible changes, greater muscle definition. The key here is that the scale might not move much or it might even go up slightly, but your body composition is shifting. Months three through six, this is where the transformation becomes obvious. Patients who transition into maintenance calories combine these peptides with consistent resistance training and adequate protein. They can see four to eight pounds of lean muscle gained. Their clothes fit differently. The mirror tells them a completely different story than the scale. Remember Jessica from earlier, the one who lost 35 pounds, but 15 of it was muscle? Here's what happened after we fixed her protocol. We added CJT-1295 with ipamorelin. We got her protein up to 150 grams a day. She started weight training three times a week. Nothing crazy, just consistent. And we adjusted her calories to support muscle growth. Six months later, Jessica had gained back eight pounds of muscle and she lost another 10 pounds of fat. The scale barely moved during that time. Maybe two pounds, total difference. But she looked like a completely different person. Her arms had definition. Her metabolism was restored. And for the first time, she actually felt confident that she could maintain her results. That's the difference between losing weight and transforming your body. Anyone can make the scale go down. The real win is changing what you're made of. Now, I need to be clear about something. These peptides aren't magic. They don't work in isolation. There are three non-negotiables that determine whether you're going to get results like Jessica or whether you're just wasting your time. Okay, number one, resistance training. You have to give your muscles a reason to grow. Number two, protein intake. Research suggests about one gram per pound of target body weight for muscle building or muscle maintenance. You can't build muscle without the raw materials. And number three, your hormones need to be optimized, specifically testosterone. If your testosterone levels are suboptimal, these peptides won't deliver the results that you're expecting. Growth hormone and testosterone work together. They're partners in muscle building. You need both legs of the stool. This is why we run labs before starting anyone in this protocol. You can do everything right. Perfect timing, perfect protein, perfect peptide protocol. But if your testosterone is tanked, you're freaking spinning your wheels. <laughs> and the peptides and testosterone therapy create the hormonal environment for growth. But you have to do the work and your foundation has to be solid. Now, if you want me to break down the exact resistance training protocol that we recommend to our GLP-1 patients to maximize muscle preservation, let me know in the comments if that'll be helpful for you, where you're struggling, and uh, I'll make a video on that next. So let's talk practical implementation. What does this actually look like day to day? For CJC 1295, ipamorelin, typical protocol, about 100 micrograms of CJC combined with about 200, maybe 250 micrograms of ipamorelin. Most providers have patients dose this about one or two times daily, often combining them in the same injection for convenience. Timing matters. These peptides work best when administered at night, about 30 to 60 minutes before bed. This aligns with your body's natural growth hormone pulses that 
happen during sleep. You also want to be in a fasted state, ideally two to three hours after your last meal and avoid eating for about 30 minutes after the injection. That's why bedtime injection dosing protocols work really well. They just kind of match this. Food, especially carbohydrates, can actually blunt the growth hormone response. Now, I've given you a lot of information in this video, peptide options, timing strategies, the importance of testosterone, protein targets, training requirements. I know it's a lot to coordinate on your own. And honestly, that's kind of the point. This isn't something that you should be piecing together from YouTube videos and Reddit threads. The difference between good results and great results often comes down to having a team that understands how all these pieces fit together. When all these pieces are coordinated properly, that's when body composition transformations really take off. And when they're not, you end up like so many patients that I see who lose weight, but they lose muscle with it. They hit plateaus after plateaus. They regain everything within a year of stopping. If you're on a GLP-1 and you're concerned about muscle loss, or you've already noticed that you're getting weaker, softer, or you're hitting a wall, this is exactly where we can help. Whether you're worried about losing muscle during weight loss, or whether you've hit a plateau, or you can't break through, or you want to transition into maintenance without regaining everything, that's what our free discovery calls are designed for. You can either text the number on the screen or check that link out in the description and you'll connect with one of our patient advocates. They're going to walk through your health history, what you've already tried and the goals that you're chasing so that we can figure out together potentially what sort of peptides, maybe hormones and interventions that make the most amount of sense for you. You get a better idea of what it's like to work with me and my team. They'll go over pricing so that you can see what long-term success actually looks like. You don't have to figure this out alone and you definitely don't have to sacrifice your muscle loss in order just to lose fat. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about peptide deep dives, check out this video right there. These are the top six peptides that we prescribe the most often in our clinic. We'll see you guys later.